In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use a combination of knowledge graphs and AI to explore a new idea or a domain of knowledge. I will be using the software that I developed called Infranodus that you see right now on the screen. And I will demonstrate step by step how you can import the data from various sources, including AI and Google represented as a knowledge graph where you can see the main ideas shown bigger and uh, which clusters they form shown with the color coded clusters of nodes and how you can use this structure to then generate topical names for them so you can get like a nice visual overview of what those topics are about and how you can also zoom into one of them for instance and then use the built-in AI to generate an interesting research question that could help you develop this concept or idea further. So if you're interested to learn how it works keep watching and I will demonstrate it step by step. Also, please subscribe to this channel so you can get informed about the new videos and that YouTube promotes this to somebody who is also interested in the same subject. First of all, we will go to Infranodus and then uh, we click here, add a new text. And I'm going to start with the topic that is quite popular at the moment, knowledge representation, but I want to learn more about it. So I'll just demonstrate the workflow that I usually take when I want to do something like this with Infranodus. First of all, I'm just going to type it in here and then I have a variety of import sources to choose from. I like to begin with the uh, Google search results and by default it shows the first four pages. You can change that here and I can analyze the search snippets by Google or actually the uh, content of the pages that were ex extracted. But I like to start with the search snippets because Google is already doing the job of extracting the most relevant content and it's quite a good way to get into it. Right, so I can see directly when we're talking about knowledge representation, the results are also talking about AI reasoning. So it's some kind of uh, like a topic that, that talks about reasoning and uh, AI. And then you also have some specific clusters on the periphery here. And actually, if I click on some of them, so for example, Wolfram language, I can see in which context they used and even the link that links to them from Google search results. So what I like to do first is just to look at the graph and see if I notice anything that's interesting for my own research and uh, then zoom into it. So for example, if I see that reasoning is quite a big word, I might also just choose to select it and remove it temporarily so I can see what's hiding around. I also understand now that um, a lot of it is about AI and describing, so I'm just gonna hide that as well. And as you can see, each time I'm removing the nodes, the whole structure of the graph is recalculated and the built-in AI is generating the names for the topics that were identified, which is kind of high-level ideas for the subject. So I'm going to look into that and then I'm going to choose something that I'm interested in. So for instance, category theory. I can click on that and then it filters the search results or the statements that belong to this topic, but I can also just ask Infranodus to summarize the visible ones. So it's just going to create a summary of this topic for me basically, and then it's going to show it here. And here it says that the text explores various aspects of knowledge representation, including symbolic reasoning, information systems and law, formal ontological principles and the use of fuzzy Petrinet. So this is already quite a lot of really interesting content that I can explore further. For instance, fuzzy Petrinets, it's something I would be interested in. So I'm just going to save it into my notes here and make sure that uh, I'm going to come back to this after. So right now it's the stage of saving ideas and uh, I'm just going to move along and try to find some other stuff. So I'm going to deselect all the notes selected ask Infranodes to show me the topics again and jump in the most uh, significant topic, which is on symbolic logic. But you have to be aware that's after I deleted reasoning AI um, and all those words that were quite big in the graph already, right? So I'm kind of looking at the context around this topic right now. Symbolic logic is something that looks interesting. So I can also click on the inside panel here, uh, ask it to derive ideas from this context and then I can ask it to generate some statement based on that. It can be a question, a chat, also something that would challenge this, uh, an assertion, an idea that would be more in the business direction, or just Google it. I'm going to try to generate a question because I feel like it's the best way to learn about something new is to ask interesting questions. So for example, here it says, how can automating the symbolic representation of problems in psychology through logic and suitable algorithms enhance the conceptual understanding of clinical questions, relying on a semantic relationship based analysis 
across diverse informational sources, including books and web databases. So that I find is really interesting. In, ha in fact, I'm not going to save the whole question. I'm just going to take the first part, which I found relevant for me, because I'm also thinking a lot about how knowledge graph representation can improve our understanding of certain topics. So I'm just going to take this, how can automating the symbolic representation of problems in psychology through logic and suitable algorithms enhance the conceptual understanding of cl clinical questions. So I'm just going to save this and then save it to notes. And what I like in Infranotus here is that we are using this graph structure that you can see on the screen to understand where to jump into the topic in a way that would be relevant to us, right? Because I selected the, the interconnected ideas and then I jump into them and uh, I try to see what else I can explore in this particular topic. But what's great is that once I use the AI to generate an interesting question and I think of the possible answers like I did now that you can also use knowledge graphs for it and to also show some relations and give anyone a better understanding of the relations that are at play when we explore a certain phenomena. I can actually feed this question back to the AI. So if I click on elaborate here, it's gonna, uh, yeah, it's gonna propose me to pose this question back to AI with a meta prompt. So I can actually delete my previous one and see which ones are available. So for example, elaborate on the statement is quite good. But if you want, you can also elaborate on the statement and keep the style. So then it will keep the style a little bit of the actual content you're working with, which can be useful if you are studying something very specific. So I'm just going to choose this and then click chat. So I get a chat GPT like response from AI in this case to that question, right? So it's going to elaborate on the statement, but provide me some answers. And here it says that automating the symbolic representation with algorithms bridges the gap between abstract clinical questions and concrete answers by translating complex psychological problems into manageable form. This enables deeper analysis and more intuitive problem solving strategies enriching both theory and practice in clinical understanding. I'm going to save this to my notes. I like the idea that when you represent something symbolically, it actually can make it easier for you to understand some patterns um, that are present in in a certain content and actually I'm going to write this idea down so when you represent something symbolically can make it easier for you to understand a certain idea so as you can see now I just used uh, some Google search results I didn't even jump into the actual pages I just got the representation from Google of this topic what's on offer so to say or the current informational supply for this topic and then um, I'm using the eye and the graph to explore it. Another way how you can import uh, like additional data here is to actually use the eye itself to generate something. So I'm going to go to knowledge representation and now instead of choosing Google I'm going to choose explore with AI and I'm going to choose a GPT topic overview. And what happens here is that we're asking AI to generate 10 statements on this topic and then we visualize them as a graph and what's great is that it kind of also gives you like a really nice understanding of what this topic is about because AI has a quite general view of any subject so it's pretty good if you want to kind of like understand what is it about right and for example here uh, the top nodes are enabling and understanding so I understand that this is because uh, knowledge representation is probably enabling an understanding of something but I'm actually going to hide those because that was already quite clear. And then I'm going to see like, okay, there's something about bridging ideas. So I'm going to select bridge ideas. And here it says that knowledge representation bridges abstract ideas with tangible data structures, right? So it's talking a lot about how it's, ten how it's bridging abstract idea with practical applications. So this is one important aspect of how it's seen. And then another one is maybe also on format and concept. So here we have an abstract concept with structured format. So it's kind of like how we can structure unstructured data it can also be really interesting. And then we have a actionable data insight as well, which can be quite interesting for those who work with data. So now we get an understanding of what it can be helpful for. And if I click AI summarize, it will actually summarize uh, the main statements and give me like a nice uh, 
sort of summary of what this topic is about, but I don't like to do it first because I like to explore the graph at the beginning myself, generate interesting questions, think with the topic and only then get the summaries. Because I feel like if I do it the other way around, is not so efficient for learning. Uh, when you have everything ready made and delivered to you, it's not so great for memory as well. You need to make an effort. And here it says that knowledge representation serves as a bridge between abstract ideas and structured formats, enabling efficient processing and understanding of complex information in various domains. It facilitates the encoding of, inf of information, leading to actionable insights and practical applications by System. So I'm going to save this also, just this last part, to my notes. By the way, this is a, like a different graph, so it's different notes. In fact, you could also work in the same graph. If I went back here, I could, in fact, uh, import data right into the graph. I would just click more sources here, choose the AI, and then import knowledge representation here. I kind of like to work with different graphs because it always refreshes my, my thinking and then I can combine them anyway. But if you were to do it in the same graph, you would basically go through the same workflow. But now as you have both Google results and graph, you can actually filter them here. So you can say, okay, I just want to see the last thing I imported about uh, AI representation, right? And then you would have slightly less notes because it always cuts the top ones so you would need to kind of like remove some of them that are maybe not so uh, relevant for you or that you feel like you already know and then you jump into the specifics right so here we also have data decision making and we also have uh, this idea about turning unstructured into structure the abstract into structured and also how it's useful for uh, machines uh, and how it's usable to make the machines understand how the knowledge is actually structured, right? So we kind of arrive to the same insight, but the advantage here is that we see everything that we Im imported at once. So you can do it both like that or one by one. And then what I also like to do is to understand a little bit what people are searching for when they search for this topic. So when I click here, knowledge representation, I can go into the uh, popular search queries option, right? And here I'm actually asking the system to tell me what people are searching for when they search for it, because it gives me a good idea of the current informational demand. So if I'm thinking about this topic, I also want to know uh, not only what exists out there, but what, but what people are actually interested in. So that would be also quite useful. And then I remove again the stuff that I expect to see there and so, so, for example, here you see there's a lot of graph learning base, which is really interesting. It wasn't in the results, by the way. So here it says temporal knowledge graph reasoning based on evolution or representation learning. This looks like a really great topic. I didn't think that those two are connected. So as you can see, it's already inspiring me how I can connect this topic of knowledge representation to my interest in graphs. And here I can even sort of send this statement in itself to AI and ask it to generate something for me on that topic. So as you can see, the workflow is always the same. I visualize the data and then I ask uh, the system to look into a certain aspect of it that I find interesting. And this is why it's kind of very helpful to combine this visual representation because it allows me as a human being, I'm very good as everyone is in pattern detection. So I look at the graph, I see patterns, and then I zoom into them like I'm doing here. And then I ask the system to generate some idea for me in relation to that. And I stimulate my thinking in this direction as well. So here it says how this approach integrates the dynamic nature of graphs over time with adaptive learning processes, enhancing the graph's predictive accuracy as it evolves. That sounds great. It's almost like an idea for a new tool or something like that. So I'm gonna definitely save it into my notes. And then also perhaps I'm gonna also copy this here because um, that's a search query that people use and save it. And then let's move on and see what else about graphs we can find. In fact, you have a really useful panel here in the analytics keyword relations. So you can see what else graph is connected to. And I can see directly that it's graph based learning, jumping. So for example, learning, let's see what about learning. Um, 
text enhanced representation learning for knowledge graphs. Okay, so that's kind of like an interesting connection between knowledge representation and representation learning for knowledge graphs. So I'm going to also save this because it can be interesting for my area of study as well. And as you can see, I'm gathering ideas like this. I will favorite this graph also here. So I remember that there were some interesting ideas here that are worth developing further in my notes, right? And when I favorite it, it's going to be start. So then it's easier for me to find it after when I look at the menu here. I can see which graphs I start. And at some point, I can also choose to actually unify them together. So I will go here, compare different graphs. I'm going to ask it to actually make a combination of all of them. And then I'm going to add these two last ones right here. Okay. And then I'm going to ask them to be visualized at the same time. I'm going to hide the top keywords because they will always be the most prominent ones here. And then I see what the clusters are. There's one on artificial intelligence, knowledge graphs, real world modeling and data processing. And interestingly, data processing, it's kind of separate from the knowledge graph AI part, right? So that's quite interesting. It means that there is a gap between the two. And it's also worth exploring this gap because this is usually where the new ideas appear. Actually, you have blind spots feature here that also highlights those gaps for you and shows you what new ideas you could generate like that. So this is also how I like to use this knowledge representation via a knowledge graph to explore how I can contribute in an interesting way to a new topic and so on. Then what I would do further is use more advanced import sources. Like for instance, if I go to knowledge representation, I can go and, and use uh, the scientific databases. So for instance, I can see if there's anything on archive on it, right? So then I would import data from there and see what the research is, is actually saying on the subject, right? And here I see that there is a lot more in research about graph models and learning, also learning, but not language. I think it's machine learning uh, and then graph learning. So uh, joint embedding, learning of educational knowledge, quantum machine learning algorithms for knowledge graphs. So as we can see, there's something about knowledge graphs and knowledge representation. And this is a research topic. And then I would uh, get those papers and then analyze them. So as you can see, I'm kind of going from a higher level perspective to uh, more and more speci specific details and documents. And this is how, how I would approach developing this further. Also, if I kind of like, let's say I didn't know anything about this topic, I would go into knowledge representation and I would ask the live ideation mode to explain it for me. And what I like here is that unlike ChatGPT, you're actually uh, checking at every step of the process if the information that you got is uh, relevant enough for you to add into your notes. So for example, here, knowledge representation is just two nodes now, right? And then AI is generating for me uh, a statement that I could use. It says, knowledge representation is how information is depicted in a way that a computer system can utilize to solve complex problems, often using structures like graphs, frames, or ontologies. This I find interesting and relevant for my exploration of this concept. So I'm going to save it to the graph and ask the system to move on. And here it's telling me, select the node's knowledge on the graph to learn more about it. So I'm going to follow the instruction here and uh, look at the knowledge but I can also look at the other one. So for example, system and representation, and then I can ask the AI to generate something for me based on this topic. So here I would go in a more like iterative way, exploring the ideas that are generated by AI and saving them as I'm learning more about the aspects of this problem that I find interesting that I select on the graph. So here it says, in a knowledge system, information is depicted through structures like graphs, frames, or ontologies to create a representation that bridges the system's understanding with complex problem-solving capabilities. We add this in, and for example, at this point, because I already researched a little bit uh, what exists out there on this topic in general, and now I'm talking to AI, I kind of get the idea of the topic. I'm going to go to AI chat and then uh, ask it, how can knowledge representation uh, improve AI workflows, for instance. So I can ask a really specific question and I'm going to switch off derived from this context. So it doesn't derive it from this context, but 
gives me a more general response. And here it's going to come up with an answer that will talk about this topic, right? So knowledge representation enables AI to model complex concepts accurately, enhancing decision making and efficiency in machine learning tasks by providing clear data relationships and context. So it pr it's providing clear data relationships and context, and this is why it's interesting. So I'm going to add this on and then kind of build uh, on here. So this is the workflow that I would normally use. Try it out with infranodus.com. Let me know if it works. Let me know if you have any questions or comments, and uh, I'll be happy to give a more detailed exploration. If you're interested, let me know, then I can really go from zero to hero, so to say, with uh, any topic, and we can see how, how to explore it using uh, knowledge graphs and the AI. Thank you.